In 2019, the United States Government Accountability Office, in conjunction with the Institute for Women's Policy Research, released a report on higher education. Of the 20 million college students in the U.S., 4.3 million of those students are raising a child. Most of these student parents are in their 30s. Nearly half of student parents are working full-time jobs. Student parents get better grades than independent students, but only half of all student parents finish their degree. Student parents are the population that is seldom on the radar. In fact, we don't ask parental or guardian status of our students at admission. All students come to FRC to better themselves in the future. For our student parents, the impact of their education is felt immediately by those they care for. As an EOPS and care counselor, I'm privileged to be a part of their journey. Extended Opportunities, Programs and Services, or EOPS, is a student support and success program for qualifying California residents. Today, you are going to meet five of our Feather River College students and hear their unique back to school stories. My name is Kristen Barraza. I am going to FRC for LBN and then hopefully go into nursing. I have two kids. My five-year-old is named Carver and my youngest is two and his name is Colson. Oh, good job. Bye. You wanna help mommy do her homework? I usually do my homework after they go to bed and you know, stay up late <laughs> and try to get it done so that I'm able to spend the day after work with my kids. I get to pick whatever one I want. Put it in, make them fat. Go, ready, set. Pew. My typical day is basically the same routine. Get up at 5 a.m. with the kids, you know, um, pack their lunch, get them ready for daycare, take them to daycare, go to work. Come home, play outside, spend time with the kids, make them dinner, put them to bed, or sometimes watch a movie before bed, and then do my homework. I drive to Westwood uh, almost every day uh, to drop my kids off for daycare so I can go to work. And I drive back and forth. My mom is on the piano. She wants how to um, help me when I get sick. Going back to school was scary. It was a scary um, decision, but overall, it has really helped me gain my confidence back as a person. You know, um, I. It's kind of hard sometimes. I do want to give up sometimes, but you know, my, my kids just kind of push me towards my goal and I do want to make a better life for them. So it's just, you know, I kind of keep that in the back of my head as I'm doing my homework late at night and getting up at 5 a.m. in the morning, you know? So it, it's not impossible. It's hard, but you know. <laughs> My name is Therese Seitz and um, I've changed my major three times during the three semesters that I've been at FRC. On my bucket list forever has been go to college and we have this sweet little college just a few miles from me. I'm just going to school for the experience. I had the time and the opportunity and I thought let's go for it. I reached out, got a professor who was extremely encouraging, and started that week. Um, I have three children. Um, one is 33, 
and has a wife and my grandbaby, who's two. And then I have a 28-year-old and a 13-year-old. The school gives me structure. It gives me uh, a goal when I get up in the morning, um, something that can, I can get started and get finished. Um, so it really adds to uh, the challenge of being a single parent. The commitment of just being mom and dad is, is big. Um, the two kids that I have at home both have disabilities and medical issues. Um, so we spend a lot of time um, meeting lots of doctors and, and uh, specialists and all of that. And of course they're not here in Quincy. So we do some traveling for that as well. I want them to be happy. Yeah, I mean, I know that's cliche, but you know, really that's all I expect. EOPS has been able to provide a lot for me. I started out in school not knowing about them and I felt a little lost. I didn't know first time in college. I didn't know um, what I was doing or I just kind of jumped in. Um, once I started her hearing about EOPS and got connected with my advisor, I felt like I wasn't alone anymore. I had somebody there to support me and lift me up and honestly, Anything I've asked her, she has known. So it's been a huge help in just having that support out there, knowing that if, if difficulties arise or is there something I don't know, she's there for me and she's very good. My name is Chantel and I am attending FRC doing prerequisites to obtain my LVN and also taking the EMT course. So my decision to go back to school, like I've been wanting to go back for years, but I didn't have the stability. So now that I'm in a position where I have the stability to go, I took the opportunity to. I have two kids, both are girls. My oldest will be two in October, and my youngest will be one September 30th, so that puts them 13 days shy of a year apart. I want to become an LVN not only because it's a solid career choice, and I'm a single mom raising two kids, um, but I enjoy helping people. So after I had my oldest daughter, her dad was physically and mentally abusive and my life kind of just fell apart. So I lost my place to live. My boss didn't give me my job back and I didn't have an income. So I was like, how am I gonna take care of this baby? And my brain wouldn't stop. For me, it took my oldest daughter's dad trying to break my arm while I was holding my daughter for me to leave. Being able to get to nearly a year sober again, um, having an extensive support system has been extremely beneficial. My biggest hope for my children is that they're better than me. I don't want my kids to go through everything that I have. I don't want them to know how crappy life can be. I just want them to know how good it can be. <laughs> the most helpful parts about being in the EOPS program is Monica, um, she's amazing. Um, there's times that I can go up there and talk to her about things that are bothering me or like what's difficult as a mom. And she's really great about just encouraging me to keep doing what I'm doing. And she's understanding. So, 
you know, if there's difficulties with, okay, what classes and which way should I be doing this? She's really great with that as well. Um, what would you say to that counselor today for believing in you in that day? When nobody else was believing, what would you say to him today? Um, well, what I have and do say to him is that I appreciate that and thank you because that was saving my life. My name is Audra Layla and I'm seven years old. My mom is studying at school about kids. My name is Joy Andrea. Uh, people call me Joy. Right now I'm studying early childhood education at FRC. I actually have four children. Um, today you'll probably see three of my children because my oldest one lives in the Bay Area with his father. Uh, he's 14. Then I have my daughter who's seven, my only little princess. <laughs> then I have my four-year-old and then my one-year-old. Um, after college, my biggest dream, I would say, is to um, own my own business in childcare. Um, I would love to have a house, but the house be my childcare center, really bringing in that, that home feel and vibe for children um, and that safe environment. What made me decide to go back to school? I would say my biggest push would be my husband. <laughs> I did go to college out of high school. I was a single parent. My son's father at the time was not involved, um, and my school counselor told me to quit. So I never got that degree. And again, after 10 years, it was like, I, I can't start over again. Um, but my husband was like, you can do it. Just try, you can do it. And it was tough, but I still did it with, with his support. I'm literally everything. I work, I go to school, I take care of my kids and the house. There's that, and then I also clean and cook, and I do the laundry, and you know what I mean? It's just all of these jobs that, that pile on. It, it's so much, but you can get it done. You just gotta like organize it. How my day is, it starts with like alarm set in like in 15 minute increments from six o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock. And if we're at eight o'clock, it's like we are rushing, running, please don't break legs, running down the stairs into the cars because mommy now has to get, get three kids in three places and then myself in 15 minutes. <laughs> so, yes, and then once the morning calm, that means I'm at work because now it's 8.15. <laughs> and yes, that is a calm for me because <laughs> then I get to prep for another 15 minutes <laughs> what I'm going to do with the kids. And then I just get into my routine. You know, um, we do our projects, we go outside, we have our breakfast, we eat, like, you know, just a nice, chill daycare and teaching day. Um, then I get off at about 5 o'clock. Five o'clock, <laughs> we put the rocket boots back on. <laughs> it's showers, dinners, um, getting ready for bed. If homework hasn't been done, getting that done. My biggest hope for my children is that they grow up to be themselves, like who they are and try their hardest to not let like what the world is saying about them like define them and alter that for themselves and like it's it's rough and it's tough and i went through a lot of things myself like oh being dark skinned not having the best hair not coming from a good family not you know a lot of that um and and i don't I don't want them to have to feel those kinds of things. So we work really hard for them not to feel that way. And I hope that with the foundation that we are providing them, sorry, oh, girl, that going. they are able to accomplish that. that. That's what I want. The most helpful piece um, of EOPS for me really is just like their support. Like 
Monica, specifically for me, um, is who I've really, really, really worked with. And she has really encouraged me to keep going. That first semester was actually really hard, um, <laughs> as you can imagine. And she was just like, like, you got this, keep going. She had like got a little book for my kids to talk about mommy going to college. And like, it's so sweet. I'm like, yay! Like that kind of stuff like helps to help them wrap their minds around. And then um, definitely like with book grants, that was new. Like I didn't have that before. Um, so even being able to not have to worry about that side of it financially kind of really takes a, a toll off. My name is Crystal and I'm studying to become a teacher. Um, I want to teach high school, so I'm actually going for my early childhood education. My daughter has ADD, my son has ADHD, and he's um, a little bit more challenging. And so that's a lot harder because I'm trying to balance everything and then school and then his school and then IEPs and things like that. So it's been, it, it's been hard, <laughs> but it's worth it. it. All this is worth it at the end because I also, it's a, it's a positive thing to show my kids that if you want something bad enough, nothing's gonna stop you. I usually wake up at 6.30 and then it's getting my, my kids up and trying to fight with them, mostly my son. <laughs> And to get himself out the door, get dressed, get ready to go. Bye bye, it's time to get up. We're gonna miss the school if we don't hurry. And then it's it's um, making sure I'm gonna have breakfast, asking if anyone's having breakfast at the house, if they're gonna have it at school. And then my kids will grab their bikes, they take off, and I head off to work um, over at Jim Beckworth High School. And a lot of times I stay at my job just so I have the, the peace and quiet to study because my kids aren't off until about three. And then I come home at that point and I try to spend some time with the kids if I don't fall asleep on the couch sitting up. <laughs> and then usually I try, to, I try to make my weekends for my kids. That's family time, that's hey, we're gonna go take the kayaks out, that's we're gonna go for a hike, we're gonna go watch a movie, we're gonna go do something. Um, that's just family time. Hi, and I thought you might like some ice water while you're doing your homework. Thanks. You're welcome. How's it going? It's going great. The biggest thing for the EOPS program has just been the supportive atmosphere that I'm in. Everyone's very positive. Um, and I just feel like I can achieve anything because I have my own personal cheering squad. I know if, if, I, if I feel like I can't do this or a test is going to be too hard or whatever, they're, they're there to help support me. My mom is studying math and how to help be a teacher because she loves children. Everything to do with my mom is just to go out and go to Lake Davis and just with her, my brother, and me, and sometimes my grandma, we would just go out to Lake Davis and just walk around because it's beautiful out there. My mom had skipped school and it just makes me really happy that she can be there for us and be an idol that she can show that even though she did it way in the past, she'll still finish what she started. I'm really proud of my mom that she would do that. I would tell the parents thinking about going back to school that you should absolutely do it. It's, it's worth it. Um, what a better example you can set for your children than, hey, the school is so important that I have to go back and complete it because your children <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. Don't be sorry. Because um, it's important. Because um, showing your kids that you can achieve it, that that they can do it too. That education is so important because because doors will open for you. The message I wish for all students who are caring for others to receive is that they are not alone. They're welcome here at FRC, and we will work to identify and provide the support services you need to be successful.